Welcome to the Crowley Show. I'm Corey. I'm Ellie. And this is Baby Sage. Welcome to Nature Art Club. The online edition. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Drawing with Cory. This week, we're learning about an an animals. Today, we're focusing on land animals. The only supplies that we're going to need today are our sheet of paper, a marker, or a pencil. Any kind of drawing utensil will work. Today, we're gonna to be drawing different farm animals. So, we're going to draw a barn with a fence and a silo, and we're gonna draw a cow, a sheep, a goat, and a chicken. Let's get started. Okay, so today, we are drawing farm animals. So. To make sure that it's obvious they're farm animals, we're gonna start out with a barn. And we're gonna draw a real simple one. But to start, we need to have our setting. And the easiest way to make our setting is to draw the horizon, or where the land meets the sky. So I'm just drawing a line all the way across. And I wanna make sure that there's quite a bit more space at the bottom than the top because we're gonna have all of our animals down here. Up here, we just need space for our barn and a little fence. So to start, I'm gonna have the top of the barn up here with a kind of upside down flattened V shape. And then at the ends of each of these, I'm gonna draw another line that kind of comes down a little bit lower. And underneath this, I'm gonna draw a rectangle. And you can use the bottom of the ground as the bottom of your rectangle. And then inside of that, I'm gonna draw a square. And inside of the square, I'm going to draw an X. And to make this look even more like a barn, we can put a silo over here on the side. So I'm doing that just with a tall rectangle. It's a little bit taller than this rectangle. And at the top of that, I'm just gonna do a little frowny face for the dome or rounded top of the silo. And then for my fence, it's a bunch of little rectangles, and I want them all to be about the same size. And you can try to make them spaced as evenly as you can, but don't worry about it too much. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then in between those, you can put a line, but to be even easier, I'm just gonna draw one all the way across. And I'm gonna do that on the other side here. And my line across too. There we go. Now we have a barn and a fence that goes all the way across. 
So now I have all of this room to put my animals. And the first animal that I want to draw is a goat. There are lots of goats around here at the schoolhouse. So I'm gonna start with a little oval shape and that's gonna be the head. And I'm gonna put two eyes in there, the top half. And then about halfway in between those eyes and the bottom, I'm gonna do a little V. And then at the bottom of the V, I'm gonna draw a straight line down. Up here on the top, I'm gonna do two little leaf shapes for the ears. So start with two frowns and underneath them, do smile. And now for the horns of our goat or our ram, I'm doing little curves are kind of like S's and they go down into the head like that. And a noticeable trait about goats are how some of them look like they have beards. So I'm drawing a line down here and then zigzagging a little bit. And there we have our goat's head. So now for a simple body, I'm just going to draw a big oval. So big healthy goat, <laughs> gotten a lot to eat. And so for our tail, I'm gonna do a backward C and then a bigger one behind it where they meet at the end. And now for the little legs, I'm going to draw kind of like a rectangle, two of them, but they've got little rounded ends. And I'm gonna color those in black for the hooves. So I've got two in the front and then two in the back. And there we have a goat. Next, I'm going to draw a cow. And the cow is very similar. We will start with an oval for the head. We'll put in two eyes on the top half. And this is where it starts to get different. Near the bottom, we're gonna draw kind of a frown line, but that's the start of his nose, cause then we're gonna put in two little more for the nose holes. And the ears are the same. We're just gonna do two little leaf shapes. And instead of the long horns, we've got two tiny little bumps right there. And behind that, we're gonna draw another big oval for the body. And then we'll add our legs just the same. And put a little black there on the ends for the hooves. And then I'm gonna add some spots on them, big black shapes make them look like a dairy cow. Next, I'm going to draw a sheep. And a sheep is really easy and pretty fun too. The first thing I'm gonna do is draw a U. This is the start of his face. And then I'm gonna draw a little bump on both sides. These are the ears. And now I'm gonna put the eyes down right near the lower end of those C's. And then I'm gonna draw an upside down triangle down below that, closer to the end, and then a U on this side and a U on that side. And it almost looks like a puppy at this point. <laughs> but then on the top of this, to get all of the woolly fur that's on there, we're gonna draw a cloud shape. And then the body is also just a big cloud shape. And now my sheep is huge. It's bigger than my cow. But that's all right, it's, it's funny. It's a funny farm here. 
Maybe we just have baby cows. And our last animal that I want to put in here is a chicken. So I'm going to have it him up close looking right at us down here. And so I'm going to start with the very top of his head and I'm going to draw like a curvy little M kind of shape. Boing, boing, boing. And then I'm going to connect the bottom. Underneath that, I'm going to draw a circle for the head and a bigger circle for the body. And where the beak is, I'm going to draw a diamond shape, which is kind of like a rectangle turned on its side. And I'm going to draw a line through it to separate the top and the bottom part of the beak. And then I'm going to draw two little dots for the eyes. And at the bottom, I'm going to draw two long U's for the legs, or the top half of the legs. And then I'm going to draw just a line sticking out on both sides. And underneath this, I'm going to make an upside down V. And then draw a line in at the bottom for that. And now we've got his feet, his legs, his body, his head. And now we just need to add in some fluff for the wings. So I like to do a little curve coming out, kind of like the same shape we have at the top, just bigger. And there we go. We've got our cow, our sheep, our goat, and our chicken, all in front of our barn with the fence. And if you wanted to add in anything extra, go for it. Here's a sped up version of me finishing mine. You can pause the video here so you can finish yours too. shaped mat board. We'll need something to paint on. <laughs> Feathers. Googly eye. Extra tissue paper squares if you have them. A brush. A cup of water. And our blue, yellow, and red paint too. I've got my paper plate to put on my paint. And I'm also wearing my apron. My apron helps protect my clothes from getting messy. <laughs> Sage knows a thing or two about getting messy. Isn't that right, Sage? <laughs> All right, so for my picture, I'm gonna get started by pouring out some of the paint I'll use. I'll pour out a little bit of some blue paint. All right, I'll pour out a little bit of my red paint. All right, this one got out a little bit too. That's why it's good to paint on something. 
It keeps your messes contained. And now a little bit of my yellow paint. All right. So now I've got my red, yellow, and blue paint, and I'm ready to get started. So I'll take my brush, I'll get it wet, and on this pterodactyl, I think that I want it to start out by having a yellow beak. So I'll just paint yellow right on the ends. Did you know that dinosaurs are the ancestors of modern day birds? So I think I want the rest of this to be pretty blue, but with a little bit of red too. So I'm going to move most of my blue over. Boop, boop, boop. Scooch over blue. I'm going to rinse it out. I'm gonna scoop up a little bit of some red. I'll put it beside my blue pile. I'll scoop up one more little chunk of red. I'll put it next to my blue pile and now I'm gonna stir it up. Wow. All right, now I've got this beautiful blue violet. And I'm gonna paint a lot of my bird this color. One of the things about the dinos is nobody knows what they looked like or what they sounded like. We just know what their bones looked like. So we make guesses as to what they look like. This means that you can paint your dino any way you want. So, I think that this line right here is going to be the line for its body. So I'm going to leave that side as is for a moment. And I'm just going to paint the whole body this blue violet color I mixed or indigo. If I had to say my favorite dinosaur, I think it would be a T-Rex. What is your favorite dino? Do you like one of the plant eaters or one of the carnivores? Carnivore means they eat meat. As I'm painting, you can notice my brush marks. And I think this looks a lot like feathers, which is what this dino had. So for the wings, I'm going to go for more of a red version of this. So I'm gonna take the same color I've got and I'm going to add some red. And then I'm going to stir it up. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Now I'm going to take this color for my feathers. And what I'm going to do is work along the edge, painting in these feathers. So I'm going to do a layer. Working my way down to the point. So next, I'm going to do the same thing over here on my other wing. So I'll start at the body and I'll bring my feathers on over. Sagey has a lot of opinions about things. Next up, I'm going to add a little bit more red to my color. So it's gonna to start to change a little bit at a time. Okay, 
here we go. This is more of a red violet color, which is kind of close to pink. Okay, now for my other side. <laughs> I wonder what Sagey's first word is going to be. She likes to say, hey, a lot. And sometimes it sounds like she's saying, egg. Yeah, kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm gonna just use plain red for the rest of my wings. It's good to paint right off the edge. That makes the color really pop on your pterodactyl. All right, there we go. So next, I want to add some of my decoration to my pterodactyl. I think a great place to start would be the googly eye. So I'll add a dot of paint, just a dot, not a lot. Then I'll take my googly eye, Google, Google, Google. And I'll plop it right down. I only add one because we're looking at a side view of this pterodactyl. The rest of the pterodactyl's eye would be on the other side, but we're not painting that side. So I'm going to get a little bit of my extra paint from right here and just make a couple of marks along here. This will help act as the glue. And I'll do it over here too. Because this time, we're going to stick on our feathers. All right. So I'll just take my feather and I'll press it on down. I love these feathers. This is another mixed media project. Sagey's favorite kind of art will be. What do you think? All right. So now I've got my feathers on my wings and I think I'm just going to add a few extra polka dots on my body. I like the idea of a polka dotted dino. And these polka dots that I'm adding on are where I'll stick some of my extra tissue paper squares. Purple and yellow polka dots. That's what I'm gonna make. Poke, poke. Purple and yellow polka dots. That is what I make. Poke, poke. All right. So now we're gonna take some of our leftover tissue paper squares and we'll just poke them right back onto our new creation, our pterodactyl. All right, there you go, stick, stick, stick. I like to get just a little bit of paint on my finger, which normally happens while I paint, and that helps me pick up the tissue paper. And I just press it down so it all stays stuck. There we go. This is looking like such a silly and fun pterodactyl. Maybe like a party pterodactyl. He looks like he would really like to bust open a pinata. That's what I think. <laughs> I'm going to name my pterodactyl Perry the pterodactyl. 
What are you going to name your pterodactyl? All right. Ta-da! That's what mine looks like once I'm finished. Here is our insect activity kit. In our kit today, we've got two sheets of paper and a pencil. We've got green salt. We've got different kinds of flowers. Insects love flowers. We've got three different kinds of plastic insects, a big gallon sized bag, a ribbon. We've got a map board painted that can fold in half and three hard tubes. And these are the supplies we'll use for our insect activity kit. Now for viewer photos and videos. Thank you so much, Jack and Sadie Mae, for following along. And we've got some wonderful videos coming up from Lola, Walker, and Zoe, Brielle and Jade, and Ford and Francis. Send us your videos to be included next time. some stars and stars needed to be well, yeah, protected so by the moon Good. it's not really a star but i don't see so i yeah, made yeah. up my imagination of i don't want you to draw like a real star just like a heart to be a star and do you know why we're doing stars first yeah because i yeah, thought i could so use real. my imagination we draw something with our purple marker and mm -hmm. i want you to start Straightly draw just a big, big circle. Take the blue marker and use it to just color it on the moon. It's okay if you touch some on the purple. But the real important thing about the galaxy is the Earth. The Earth lives where we live. That's the Earth. So we live inside the galaxy. Animals, we're making a puppet show, Ellie. Yeah. But ocean animals, even jellyfish, jellyfish can see with the long tentacles. On um, and on the top is squishy, and and orders bite, so that's how they protect themselves. And jellyfish have squishy heads and googly eyes. We'll see you, see you next, next time. time.